dedicate this to all the survivors of the residential and boarding school plague that swept across our nation. To forgive is to gift yourself the freedom to heal. You make me strong. My name is Tracy Bone. I am a singer, songwriter, mother. I also come from the Kisikuini and Ojibwe First Nation, Treaty Territory 2, on my late father's side. And on my mother's side, I am from the Broken Head Ojibwe First Nation, uh, Treaty Territory 1. I am presenting a project that was meant to be uh, an event that would include all the people in the area on June 21st. Uh, unfortunately, of course, due to the, the COVID uh, pandemic and the changes uh, that have come about because of that, we had to get creative and we had to uh, figure out how we were going to get this done and what that may look like moving forward, uh, considering we had so many um, aspects to this that we had already had uh, going and confirmed as far as uh, uh, people who were going to perform and what this was going to look like. My vision for everything and my hope was that this would be a relationship building opportunity for each of us personally and as well uh, w with one another and initially I had gone into uh, five different schools in the area to recruit eight to ten songwriters within the 13 to 18 year range because they were all in schools and I was pleasantly surprised. The response was overwhelming from the schools that I had traveled to to find these songwriters to uh, create and to contribute to the healing of this planet. But unfortunately at that time that's when uh, the COVID had had begun and after that we couldn't go back into the schools. Having these youth be able to speak their truth, to empower these youth to utilize that gift of creativity and storytelling in a vulnerable way that allows them healing as well as educates others. Quite the challenge as far as Wi-Fi goes because one of my participants the um, service is not very good where she is at. You're trying to do live videos and, uh, you know, kind of vibe off each other's energy. So we had to work through those types of challenges. I've never used Zoom before, so this was something new for me. And it's been um, a wonderful learning experience for, for myself as to how I was going to accomplish this. We as artists can contribute and be of service to others and also be of service to ourselves. So at this time, I'd like to introduce Melissa Galvin Byrne. The song's called Make It Right, and the reason that I wrote it was because I had a friend who was really, really like this guy, and they just, they knew they wanted to be together, but they wouldn't tell each other. They would look at each other from across the room, and they knew it could work. They just never tried. So kind of, that's kind of where the song came from. The song.
three participants that I am going to present to you today. With the whole night through, yeah, I can love you, girl, till the morning comes. Ain't no doubt in my mind, you know the words. I can give yeah. what you need, yeah. just give me the time. Baby, listen to my heartbeat. One more solo. Good job. If I wanted you, girl, would you want me to? If I needed you, girl, would you need me to? I could love you, girl. Would you want me to? If I needed you, girl, would you need me to? Next year, 2021, we will be having a huge event in the Riding Mountain National Park in southwestern Manitoba. We are going to be expanding on this idea of building relationships and doing this on a stage as well as having many, many other educational pieces and building this new world, this new foundation um, is making sure that we have the voices of our youth heard. So it is my pleasure, my honor to present to you the Songwriting Circle. Okay, so I mean it's not it's not done. Like, mm -hmm. So yeah, I don't know how to end it, and I want to put a bridge in there, but I don't know. I don't know what to do. Yeah. Okay. So why don't you? Well, do you have an idea of how it goes already? Yeah. Do you want to hear it? Yes. We'll go for it. Right. Hmm. I love that. That's some deep, deep, powerful lyrics. And I really like the melody. The melody is very mm, infectious and it hangs with you and stays with you and matches the, your, the mood of the lyrics. But like, you've always been really, really good at that. So, what made you want to write this? I mean, um, I think for a long time, because of the effects that mental illness and systemic racism has had on me, I have been very afraid to step out into activism and into protesting and being vocal about um, the things that I see that are injustices and that are wrong. And I think this past week with what has been going on with the Black Lives Matter movement, as well as in general, like delving deeper into researching these topics and finding new terminology and different terms, I felt like I needed to write something like this. Like, mm -hmm. I had written a spoken word piece a couple of days ago that had a similar energy, but I definitely wanted something, like, a musical, and I wanted to find a way to express um, more of my Indigenous concerns. Yeah, exactly. Can't you sing? Can't you sing? Can't you sing? My name is Boland Valarba Bone, and I, my family comes from Kisikuinen and Ojibwe First Nations. I am currently living living in Germany. 
I identify as trans, non-binary, and two-spirited. Um, this means that I neither identify as woman nor man, but as a, in my opinion, non-specific third gender, though that can vary from person to person. I didn't fit in with the binary system that was put into place for me at birth. Yeah. And that a lot of ideas about who I should be and why I should be certain ways were forced upon me because of the body that I was born into rather than the person that I am. Hmm. Thank you for that. You know, you have a really strong um, writing style and perspective. It's very, very unique, and, and I really admire uh, your um, honesty in, in your uh, lyrical content. And of course, I'm a huge, huge fan of your voice, so uh, I would like to know um, mm -hmm. if you could introduce your, your creative piece. I think with a lot of the things going on in the media and in the world right now, especially with the George Floyd protests going on, it hit me really hard. It hit me in a way that like I had been, I think I had been trying to hide from for a long time. And um, I think at that point, like that, like that, that situation just, really brought back a lot of really dark memories and really like scary points in my life where my own family and my own well-being was put into question by systemic racism mm -hmm. and i had kept I, I had been writing for some time about it and i had written a couple of like spoken words on it and i just i felt like i needed something more I really like being here. I like the language, and for the most part, I like the people, and I like the general systems that it runs under. But I have faced many situations that, are, that have been extremely uncomfortable. Um, for example, I've come into contact with people who immediately when they meet me, and learn that I am Aboriginal, immediately begin expecting me to tell them about my trauma at the hands of racism. Mm -hmm. Which is to say, like, uh, they'll ask me really inappropriate, invasive questions, like, um, like, how does it feel to be, like, oppressed or, or, like, this or that? Or they'll ask me just really weird questions, like, do you know anybody that lives in a teepee or has met a bear? Hmm. Oftentimes, this leads to what I like to call um, white fragility and sort of um, white guilt. Hmm. So what comes with, with white fragility is this feeling of immediate, like taking immediate offense to being shown a boundary about race. And getting defensive that white people are oppressed too, and that people should just not talk about race and forget about the years of absolute torture that our cultures have been through. Or it leads to white guilt, where the person becomes so upset that your hurt and your discomfort in that situation doesn't matter. They want you to calm them and make them feel better about having been insensitive and rude. How has the COVID-19 pandemic changed your life, if at all? And uh, what types of challenges have you had to face personally or creatively since then? It was scary. It was really scary because Germany took a lot of really fast and direct action as soon as um, cases started to arise. Um, which I think was good. I think it was good that their immediate reaction was to, like, despite the fact that the country would lose money and knowing this, they closed everything down and put the people before the people before money. I was confronted with a lot of things that I had been actively trying to escape through work or through study or through 
just distraction in general. And I think that the pandemic really opened up this space where I couldn't, I just couldn't do that anymore. And it just wasn't possible. Hmm. So a lot of things hit me at once. And in, in that first month, um, things were really bad. I was very depressed. I was very anxious. I struggled a lot and it got worse over time until I stopped trying to run from it. Hmm. And I just sat down with these problems and these fears and these anxieties and I spoke to them, whether that be like a person who was doing this to me or something I was doing to myself or something I was doing to somebody else. Mm-hmm. And, and these things are hard. And then it really, I feel like it really gave me a chance to transform a lot of those feelings and a lot of those fears into strength, like the strength to speak about the things that I was afraid of, the strength to recognize my faults and to accept them and to understand where they were coming from Mm -hmm. and then to do something with that. Like this song, for example, like that, like the song that I wrote is a direct result of me learning to take pain and fear and turn it into something that will help me grow and that will show others that it's possible. Hmm. Beautiful. Absolutely. Yeah. It's been a a difficult time for many. Um, A lot of things like you mentioned about like mental health have been coming up for people. And, you know, from my personal perspective and experiences uh, going through my own healing, that's part of uh, the journey to wellness is, uh, you know, the universe brings things up in our lives for us to, you know, decide to deal with them in a, in a healthier way and face them, you know, face those fears. So that takes a lot of courage to do. Um, I think, you know, there is a mental health crisis, and I think that's the biggest crisis uh, on this planet because I think and I feel like everything is a branch off of that. Uh, I think that's something that uh, if, you know, we can uh, look at it as a, uh, you know, a universal need for us to be able to, you know, share like you are with your experiences and to bring healing to other people through your own story. Uh, You know, I feel like that's contributing to the overall wellness of of humanity and people uh, moving forward. So it is as far as like the mental health uh, goes for you, uh, what are, you know, if you feel comfortable enough sharing, uh, what are the types of skills, you know, or tools uh, that you go to or utilize for yourself? I mean, I think one of the things that began to help me a lot was realizing the type of person I am. And the reason, um, I guess, why these types of things build up inside of me mm-hmm we could get into anxiety. I have an anxiety disorder. That is a thing. And one of the reasons I found is because I just have a lot of energy. I'm a very energetic person. And I'm always running around. I'm always trying to get things done. And that's the problem is that I have a lot of energy and I need to expend it. And so when I don't do this, when I don't take care of that, built up energy inside of me that leads to a lot of anxiety it leads to spiraling of thoughts that leads to not feeling like i can sit down and relax so i turn to exercise in those scenarios to manage my anxiety but the real thing that helps is accepting that there are things that i can't control Hmm. and understanding that even if I were to put every ounce of my being into having things go my way, that's just not realistic and that's okay. And I mean, it it sounds easier than it is because realistically, this has taken me years to find this type of balance and to be be this stable in myself and in my life. Like there were times where I like months where I didn't even get off of my couch and that's all I did. And it really was having the strength to get up and force myself to get into therapy 
and putting myself in situations I was uncomfortable with, like working, like going out and meeting new people and showing myself that each time that I did it, that it wasn't going to kill me and I wasn't going to stop existing or break because something didn't work. I struggled with mental health my entire life. I was first diagnosed with um, mental illness at 14. And I think for one, to diagnose a child with a mental illness is incorrect. Mm -hmm. To give a child that type of diagnosis is severe, especially when they're a teenager. And teenagers are going to have varying moods and cycles of feeling things and to to diagnose them that early I feel is a bit too much I feel like teenagers should definitely receive more care and more time before receiving a diagnosis Hmm. I feel like that really like for one I was misdiagnosed as Hmm. a teenager when I was a teenager they diagnosed me with cluster B traits which translates directly like they would they I found out later that those cluster B traits they were talking about was borderline personality disorder Hmm. and so as a result this is what I thought that I had Um, and it wasn't true it wasn't right and later on through further therapy um, I found out that it was post-traumatic stress disorder and not borderline personality disorder which the treatment for those are so different Hmm. and I had spent years stuck feeling sick because they misdiagnosed me and they diagnosed me too soon. Hmm. And I think it's something that people really need to think about. Secondly, you can feel very hopeless. You feel like everything is unfair. And the truth is, is that it is. I was given these things by family members and people that didn't know how to love themselves and didn't know how to love me and didn't know how to treat me. But understanding that you don't have to keep feeling that way and that there is a way out and just believing that as hard as you can is going to take you a long way. And then the next step is separating the sickness from the person. Hmm. You really need to dig in and figure out, am I angry at my friend because they legitimately hurt me? Or am I angry because they are triggering an anxiety and a pain? Yes. And pulling apart those pieces is going to help you figure out who you are, not just what happened to you but who you really are underneath of that trauma Mm -hmm. nice absolutely thank you for sharing all of that i'm at a point in my life where i am capable of not everything a neurotypical person would be capable of i for example I'm not ready to work a full-time job, but I am more ready to work a part-time job. And I think that this is something that's really important for people to start to talk about as well, is only doing what you are capable of and not what others expect of you. Part of self-care and caring for yourself is about just that. And that's one of my goals is to find that sweet spot that fits for me Mm -hmm. is to try out different things and, you know, hang out with my friends when I feel capable and go to protests when I feel capable and join activism groups or join painting groups or anything like that when I feel capable. And over time, my goal is to learn my boundaries and to learn how far I can stretch and how far is too much and when I can keep pushing, even if I'm tired, and when that's not right. I definitely want to try to reach out to more people in one way or another. I've been reading a lot about, I guess, the different roles that people can play in activism. And I think really mine is a speaker. I'm very well spoken and I inform myself deeply about the things that matter to me. 
I've been writing since I was eight, and that's not going to stop. I feel like music will always be a part of my activism, and it will always be a part of my self-care. And also, I plan on creating more art and trying to find more people to, like, more varied, like, diverse people, um, ideally part of the queer and BIPOC community, to develop more creative projects together. Hmm. Cool. And so, uh, creatively um, speaking, what, uh, I mean, you're a singer and you're a songwriter, but uh, instruments, what instruments do you or have you picked up and, and learned and are interested in? Um, I mean, it's been a long time since I picked up anything other than the guitar but I, and the ukulele. I play the ukulele and I play the guitar regularly. Um, I have, I, I guess I learned how to play the clarinet in high school. Um, I took violin lessons. Those are pretty cool. And when I can get a hold of another violin, I'm going to be practicing that as well. Hmm. Um, I really want to take piano lessons when I'm given the opportunity and the time and the space. Very good. That's awesome. That's a lot of, a lot of instruments. And then you're also an artist as well, right? Yes, I draw, I paint, I, I also like to sculpt. That's been something I've been picking up lately. It's, uh, it's, it's on its way. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, I tattoo, crochet, I knit, I also embroider. Um, I'm also picking up beading again. I have a lot of hobbies. <laughs> and I think that's great for mental wellness as well, you know. Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, like, I mentioned these times where I didn't get up, get out of, like, get up off of my couch. But there are also times in these very, like, low depressive, episodes where I would have some energy and I decided to devote that time to learning new skills where I could and when I could so in that time I learned how to sew by hand and then later I got a hold of a sewing machine and I learned to do that and I think that as long as you're trying something even if you don't get very far or you put it down after a while, the fact is, is that you tried it and now you have at least the start of a new skill and you can always pick it up at any point and continue with it. Mm, that's really great advice. And, you know, that even leads into this last question. Could you tell us more about your vision uh, and hope for the for the future of humanity uh, considering there is so much racism being called out today i mean honestly i think the whole system needs to be dismantled the system that we have was made by white people for white people and a lot of the systems that are currently in place were built specifically to oppress colored people for example, the police in America were first founded by slave patrols, white men that would go on the streets and capture escaped slaves and drag them back to wherever to be punished or to die or to be God knows what. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people are unaware of this, that these systems are grounded in racism. It's not just a byproduct. It is something done purposefully mm -hmm. and in order to move forward we have to start from the beginning defund the police a lot of people are against that i think that there's a lot of really strange fear around that i think that they think that as like we mean like when we say defund the police we mean just don't have any police anymore but that's not the case the real action behind defund defund the police is to take money away from a system that is harmful towards colored neighborhoods and people and to and specifically targets black and indigenous people and move that money towards things like mental health and community strength 
and allow communities to handle issues within themselves by giving them the resources and the ability to do that. And in general, like capitalism is garbage and should not be a thing. And we need to find better and healthier ways to take care of our people. Because right now, the world is built for money, not human beings. Very true. I have to really, really, really thank you so much for your educating uh, us. And, um, you know, I've learned a lot from you. I always do. And I think that, you know, the people that get to hear your, your perspective are in for a treat and you know I, I I've learned a lot and I know that others will really value what you have to share uh, your song your voice your story it takes a lot to be vulnerable and share so much of yourself but that is part of the healing process and we are storytellers and you know the things that we have experienced in our lives have given us the the tools and the um, perspective to do what we do as artists to bring um, love, you know, moving forward and to help build on this new world together. So thank you, thank you, thank you for being a part of all of this. And
My name is Jocelyn McKay, and I'm from I'm 18, and I'm from Rolling River First Nation. The song I wrote is called "Take Your Time," and what inspired me to write it was the election on my reserve. The reason for that was because a bunch of people kept bringing up the next generation, and I just feel like um, they don't really involve our youth in discussions and on like what we want to see, uh, see and hear. Yeah. So does anybody else in your family sing, Jocelyn? Um, my little sister does. Yeah, how old but is she? She's 11. Oh, wow. Yeah, but um, I don't think she'll sing in front of people. Yeah, not quite child. yet. <laughs> well, maybe when she sees you doing it more, she'll be a little less shy. That's how my sisters were. And they can sing amazing, so I don't know, you know, they're just shy. <laughs> Alrighty, so what have you, uh, what have you come up with creatively? It, I just made this song. Okay. Yeah. So you already I have one almost? Oh, no, I kind of have one. It, uh, it does sound really good, but like, I... I was playing around with it. Okay. Do you want to try and play it for me as it is? Could you do that? Sure. Okay. That's awesome. When you've had that for a while? Uh, actually, I just made this. Oh, that's so good. And your voice got so much better even. Like, you have more of an experienced sounding voice. That's cool. Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that was really good. Uh, what I wanted to do for the first one is just establish where you're, you're beginning from. Um, you're already so far, you've already created, you know, a song. So that's great. That is so great that you have as much as you do. So what I would like is two things from you. Number one is send me your lyrics. We're frozen again. <laughs> Can you hear me okay now? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I need your lyrics. And okay. if, if you can, remember how you sent me your song before? You just played it into your phone and then just sent me the audio? Okay. Or you can send me a video, whichever is easier for you. So that the next session we have... I'll have a better idea of it and some suggestions. And so, yeah, that's all I need from you right now. That'll be the homework. I really love your melody. I really love that. It seems really soothing. And like I said, your voice, it's, it, your voice has grown. I'm happy to be working with you on this. So in the third session, we'll do more about talking about you and where you come from and why you wrote what you did okay does that sound okay yes awesome okay jocelyn thank you for this and i think your song is gonna be really great okay all righty sweetheart i'll talk to you soon let me know when you're available uh sometime this week anyway and we'll get her done okay, okay take care and have a good day We're paused again. <laughs> okay, take care. I know we can hear each other now. We're moving. <laughs> okay, you too. Okay, take care, Jocelyn. Personally, right now, my main goal is to graduate from high school. After that, I'm unsure. 
But I have thought about focusing on my music for about a year, and if nothing happens, then I do want to go back to school and work on becoming a teacher or just something, yeah, something to do with kids. I'm unsure if COVID-19 changed my life, but I can say that it does take a toll on my mental health. I also have writer's block at times, but other than that, then um, I'm okay. <laughs> um, I do see creativity as a healing tool. It helped me a lot, actually, just sitting down and playing guitar. It, it calms me. And I hope it's okay that I don't want to talk about my healing journey. Journey. <laughs> it's just something I'm not used to talking about at the moment. <sighs> so your chorus there, I was just listening how you sing it. So I was like, take your time. Something like that. Take yeah. Your video's frozen. <laughs> I just okay. see your face from about 10 seconds ago. <laughs> so, <laughs> I stop it. <laughs> okay, sorry. Okay. Like, you can go to E minor after that, like, A minor, C minor. You could do that. A minor, C minor. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Learning how to love yourself, take your or pretend, or I don't know. Uh, but yeah, already I'm your sure. chorus is, it sticks in my head. It's probably gonna be sticking in my head. I'm gonna be sitting outside and be like. <laughs> it's just like that, you know? And that's what makes the songs so memorable. I, I really love your idea and it's a great message. <laughs> and I'm glad you're part of this, Jocelyn. <laughs> so, the fact that we're we're artists, you know, this is why we're given the gift. Is because we we we've gone through some stuff, right? And if we hadn't, there's no way we'd be able to, uh, like, relate or understand or have really a healthy place to express it right but through music we can say and do anything yeah and without even trying because we're honest with ourselves and and our creativity it just automatically heals people around us people who hear us you know and uh yeah, I just wanted to mention that to you. It's just to My hope for the future is that there is less racism, racism and just less negativity about everything. I know that, it, that that's kind of like unrealistic, but um, I can hope for it. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's so weird. Sometimes you freeze and then it's just like... <laughs> 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 Am I freezing too sometimes? Yeah. So I'm like, like that, and then I'd be frozen like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe I'll take a picture of us like that. <laughs> That's funny. It's making me sweat. <laughs> Uh, introduce Jocelyn McKay, who comes from the Rolling River First Nation, just over there. I don't know if you can see my lips, but over there. Her song that she is going to sing is called I'm Gonna Find Myself Someday. She's a very new songwriter. And uh, like I said, I admire this young lady because she was the one who took every step to get herself here. So it's when you take initiative to follow your dreams, that's when things start to happen for you. 
Uh, she's been writing for about two and a half years, and she's loved singing. Uh, she started singing when she was about two years old, she said. Uh, so, at this time, I'd like to welcome Jocelyn McKay. My grandparents, uh, well not my grandparents, well my two grandpas who passed away recently, well one passed away recently. that I started playing guitar in the first place because they'd go out and go play, play places. I don't know if you know them, but <laughs> so uh, this one's great.
I'm Serenity, and right now I'm in Beyond 12 Step Rehab in Salmon Arm, British Columbia. Honestly, this is the longest I've been sober in four years. And I never knew I could have as much energy as I do right now, probably because I just gulped down an ice cap, but it's pretty solid here, honestly. Um, it was hard at first, a lot of crying, a lot of depression, but when you kind of have to sit here for 30 days, you kind of get forced to sit with yourself and your emotions and having to accept everything and writing everything down. And like, I never journaled and I have like a full journal already. That was never something I did, but it helps, it helps a lot. And I have the support of everybody around me here. Literally everybody here is amazing and it's scary. It's scary coming here, but like it's only the two, the first two weeks are the hardest. The first two weeks are the hardest and then it's just, yeah. I really recommend treatment centers. They're here for you and as long as you can open up, just don't be afraid to open up because you never know what you're missing in your life, honestly. Thanks. My piece is called An Alternate Hell Your Mother Never Told You About. I wrote it in 2017. Um, the experience that inspired me to write that was probably just like, all the shitty experiences I had in 2016. I was pretty alone. I was in a bad, abusive relationship, and I guess that's just what happened, what came out of me, and what I thought the world was, and the way that I needed to express myself at the time. For me, creativity, I guess, is a healing tool. For me, I haven't really been like that creative with art. I mean, slightly. And it has helped me, like, looking back at everything that I've accomplished in that kind of aspect, like, art. And just the spoken words that I've done really gives me something to look back at on where I was at one point in my life and to be happy that I've continued to move forward. My healing journey has been pretty long. I'm only 18, so... It's only the beginning now, but I plan to have a lot more to do with being creative in my sense, I guess, and expressing myself through video and effects and all that kind of stuff. My personal and creative goals would be um, probably to further my education, child education, working with er like younger kids and I don't know, just being more interactive with the music and with my bass guitar, mostly just rock and stuff, being able to like jam to that kind of stuff on my bass. It's really like soothing for my soul anyways. And yeah, one day I would just like to have my own brand pretty much and just like make skate videos, any kind of videos really like making clothes. I wanna make grip tape, that's really creative. So, or it takes a lot of creativity to be able to do that. So I'm gonna try and figure out what kind of designs I would like to just get better at my skating, my skateboard. I'm not good at it, but I try. Um. Okay, we're over here in BC somewhere. That's my kid, and that's my cook'em. <laughs> Just little things like that. My vision and hope for the future with all of the racism and hate that's going on right now is just that eventually that one day people will genuinely start listening. The racism, I just don't really put myself in like, I don't really watch the news or anything just because I know how pissed off I'd get watching it. But I hope that one day, eventually, that we do have a really good leader and somebody who can really inspire more of us to come together and not hate each other for no reason. Just for the world to be more understanding and accepting of all people because we're all the same. Here's my piece for this. I published it officially February 26th, 2017. 
under the name Reef. So here it is. Maybe I'm not meant for you. Perhaps maybe I'm not meant for anyone. I expect too much. I've been so deprived of the feeling called love my whole life. No amount of it will ever replace the love that was supposed to be there a long time ago. Maybe I'm incapable of love. I make things hard for myself, allowing the most absurd thoughts to pour into my soul. Everything you did turned into reasons why you didn't want me, but in reality, I just didn't want myself. I didn't want myself to be happy because I didn't think I deserved it. I didn't want myself to find love because I didn't want to feel the warmness and hope be ripped out of me by your hands and then leave me to get worse and worse by the day to the point I end up not existing. In this world, that's too gray for its own good. The last beat. Yeah, it hurt, but for what it's worth, fuck the earth. This hemisphere of agony and tears is not a place, but an alternate hell your mother didn't tell you about. I dedicate this to all the survivors of the residential and boarding school plague that swept across our nation. To forgive is to gift yourself the freedom to heal. You make me strong.